Ring saws, there's a reasonably new development. A company called Gemini is, is making these, and it's like a 10 inch blade without a core. It's just a ring of sintered diamond. And it's almost like having a water jet in your shop. It's, uh, I, this video says it all. And there are large and small ring saws available. Uh, smaller ones are, are more geared towards doing thin glass, like stained glass. Uh, thicker ones, uh, he's just cutting a, a dowel of air there, so it's probably an inch thick. And going through it pretty quickly. Turning it on, you know, you're getting all kinds of wonderful curves. There is a maintenance uh, issue with these. I mean, you've got to pay attention to the belts and the grommets and the pulleys and all that are inside. It also is self-contained water-wise. If you have one of these and you don't know it, adding ice to the water will make the tool run more efficiently, just keeping it cold because a lot of friction happens and uh, the glass and the water can get warm after a while. A diamond bandsaw, uh, here we go with a tool that I don't personally use, so if I'm wrong with anyone, jump in. But uh, it, it, it again is a self-contained uh, unit, uh, water in the base, recycles, so it's one, uh, another one of these machines, you turn it on, you can start working on it. Very smooth cutting. And the nice thing about the cut is it's vertical. So if you want to cut a notch out of a piece of glass, this is going to be far better than a tile saw that has the curve because you can only get the curves together and um, a lot of cold working. This, this will make a, uh, you know, the more appropriate or, or better cut in that direction. The downsize is you're really limited to the size of the throat in the saw. Depending on the size of your saw, it could be a few inches, could be you know eight or ten inches, and the bandsaw's blades are reasonably pricey, and they always break prematurely before the diamonds wear out. Some companies can re-weld them, but uh, again, it's it's a machine that's going to require a bit of maintenance and patience as as you learn how to use it most efficiently. There are different ways of making saw blades. Most of it is sintered. Sintered is where the diamond is encapsulated in metal, much like gravel in concrete. So as the metal wears away, new diamonds are exposed. And again, like I said before, it is a very narrow grinder. So the quality of the diamond, the grit of the diamond, the concentration of the diamond, all makes a difference as to how it cuts. You can get big slabbing saws that are thick, really gnarly diamonds in it and they'll go through your bricks and glass in a heartbeat and chip like the devil. There are finer blades that are thinner if your work is kind of precious. If you're doing pattern bars and you don't want to waste it with a thick cut, you can get a thinner blade. Uh, there are even uh, resin bonded blades which leave the smoothest, finest cut, are painfully slow to cut through anything and generally used only in scientific glass working where they're cutting tubing, very thin things. A core drilling is, um, again, um, a circular grinder. So depending on how you're drilling or what you're drilling through and what your priority is, you may be after the core or you may be after the hole. The core can get stuck in there, and that almost always happens. Core drills are generally hollow, so you can get a nail in it and knock the core out. If you're using a, um, a center drill bit, Chances are you're just going to knock all the diamonds off the drill too, so that's not the best way to get out. I like compressed air. You put it in the back and out shoot your glass. Um, aim carefully. Again, it's a circular grinder, and going through the back, there's always, always a uh, big blowout, little chips of glass on the back. If what you're drilling through is flat, here's another good opportunity for a piece of glass wax to the back. So your blowout happens on that, and you heat it up with a hairdryer or hot water, slide off that glass, and you've got a perfect edge by hand or with a drill press. Uh, drill press is always better. The way you're wiggling it there, if, if that's a good way to get it jammed in there, which will crack, and crack the glass, get it stuck up in there, bend your core drill. And then whoever you buy your core drill from is getting the advantage of your careless drilling. They're, they're also sintered diamonds or electroplated. Uh, the electroplated is kind of a single use, not a single hole, but you drill until the diamonds are worn off the edge and then it's thrown away because it's no longer um, a drill. Centered may give you a centimeter of diamond to, to wear through as you're going through. So it's much more efficient. The drills are not radically different in price. Centered drills may be a little bit more expensive, but the centered drills should have a water feed assembly. 
that will cause water to go through the drill and wash out the ground glass for its, um, for, for its life and the efficiency in the glass. There's more of an infrastructure with, uh, with, with center drills. And then you can always uh, work on your glass by hand. Uh, if you have more time than dollars, it's the way to go. And there are a lot of cool tools. The hand pads are, um, can take you always, all the way up from a rough grind to a polish. I mean, there is a cerium hand pad. You just add water. So it's just a different way of getting it. It's good for a little blemish removal. You gotta, you're doing a casting. You get all the little spikes on the edge. You can sand those off. All depends on what and how you need to uh, finish your glass. Dirty. Uh, even if that was being done with, mirror, with, with, uh, with diamonds, it's still slow and tedious and tough on the back and the wrists and knuckles. A lot of people will give a, a, a grind on their glass on a piece of plate glass with a little bit of slurry of, of, of grit. Back again, we all do the same thing differently. So handwork versus machinery. The price is right, the time is not. Sandblasting gives you a lot of options with the uh, decoration in the glass, carving, detailed etching. You know, a lot of us get into uh, making uh, logos and awards for uh, some company here and there. Uh, easy way to do it. You can make your own stencils. You can cut them. There, there are photo etch stencils. You can buy them. Some people will, uh, will frost the glass with uh, sandblasting before slumping to give a texture to it, but it'll still somewhat fire polish different effects, uh, different, different qualities. And it is, uh, like I said, it's done with an abrasive media. Sandblasting, obviously, initially they use sand, but it breaks down really quick. You can still find sandblasting, probably places that work with metal and they'll clean the metal for prepping of, of building equipment or whatever. But um, typically we use aluminum oxide or silicon carbide. It's easy to do, need a little practice can be done outside if you're uh, wearing some kind of respirator. Inside, these booths have uh, dust reclamation systems that um, will keep the dust out of the air. That's dreadfully important because uh, silicosis is the, our version of black lung. You don't want to go there. And again, you need to watch that your air compressor is capable of handling your, uh, your sandblaster. Dust reclamation systems are typically you know, with small ones, could be a shop vac with a good vac and filter, like a HEPA filter. So it doesn't have to be too exotic, it just has to be efficient. Acid etching is another way of working on the surface of glass to give a nice, smooth, satin finish. There's an apple by Richard Ritter. He creates his forms and then immerses them in uh, a hydrofluoric etching solution. Uh, there's a number of them out there, and they're all pretty much the same chemistry. It's not something you want to get on your hands because it uh, loves to be absorbed into your skins and go back and visit your bones. <coughs> Painful. I've been there, done that once. But the surface is very uniform, smooth matte finish. The etching process, acid etching, will etch different colors differently. You may, you may find if you're doing something with a lot of colors, the black will etch, but the white will not, and the red is kind of is iffy. In that case, a lot of people will give their glass a light sandblasting first and then acid etch it to get the finish that they want and it'll be very uniform. So it's just a different way of, of approaching uh, surface finishing. It is toxic and dangerous and needs to be done with uh, good housekeeping rules of, uh, of safety.